What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. I hope everybody's having a great day. Folks, got a really, really good one for you. You're going to want to watch this right to the end. You're going to want to take anything you have as far as magnifier, whether it's a regular magnifier you use in your hand or a jeweler's eyepiece, you're going to absolutely need it because this is awesome. What I'm talking about is the Dwarf Planet series. Now, when you see the photo at first, you're like, eh, it's kind of vague, doesn't really show anything, Chris. Uh, what are you trying to point out? Okay. They're using the same technique they use on the moon and on Mars. If they don't want you to see any kind of details, what do they do? They brighten it up. They bring it way up as far as uh, exposure of that certain part or make everything bright. Things along them lines, right? Now, what caught my eye on this is this square. And I'm going, okay, why is that square there? And why does it look like it's off the ground? Because you can see a shadow. Now, folks, I believe this is the same area that they showed a photo of a long time ago, a super bright area. I think they just got a lot closer. Let me show you what they found, or at least what I found that they were trying to cover up. Let's just jump right into it. All right, you can see it right here. It's from JPL. And you can see right here, the ID number is a PIA24062, Dawn Stereo Anaglyph of Hydrothermic Pits and Domes in Akatoa Crater series. Now, of course, you can get the TIFF here, which is the biggest one you want. You don't want the small JPEG. It's crap. And you can see right here in the description, it says the Dawn spacecraft captured these stereo images of Akator Crater on the Dwarf Planet series in 2018. Framing camera images were used to construct this anaglyph view, which requires red-blue stereo glasses for viewing, basically 3D, you want to make it look like 3D, of part of the southeastern floor of the crater. Now it says this area is approximately 3 miles or 5 kilometers uh, wide and is entirely within a large impact melt deposit form that there during the impact process. Okay. It also goes on to say the low bright mounds and pits were probably formed by brine that moved to the surface to form surface vents and surface domes during freezing. Okay. Now this is the part I find really interesting. More information in Wikipedia. And it says series... Minor planet designation, when it says one series, is a dwarf planet, get this, in the middle main asteroid belt between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. Wait a minute. When I think asteroid belt, I think of rock in various sizes, right? Super large to dust. I don't think of it as a round planet. It just happens to be within an asteroid belt. I find it a little weird and a little unusual, and maybe that's why they went after it as well. Hmm. And, of course, you guys will get the links to this for more information on this a small dwarf planet. Now, let me show you what I found interesting. Right off the bat, I don't have to point this thing out. Just to the center to the left, you have what looks like this square section. And you can see what looks like there's a shadow underneath it. Okay, that's a little bizarre to me right off the bat. Okay, now notice that they're saying that a lot of this white is probably brine. Or is it? I don't believe that it is. Now, let's get into Photoshop and have a closer look. All right, you can see it right here. Now, I rotated this about 52 degrees uh, counterclockwise so we can have a better look at this thing because it's pretty wild. Now, when I look at that, I think intelligently made. There's something square right there, and it's just off the surface, and you can see a shadow under it. So now I want to check out what's under or around this square, right? So right off the bat, I try to docking this up, see if I can see anything in here. Well, I started to see shapes in here, folks. Now, what confused my eyes is kind of the anaglyph kind of stacking they're doing here. They're trying to make it look like, you know, again, like this 3D so you can look at it. It's all a part of trying to cover up what's here. So as I got into this a little bit more, we're going to make this black and white. Whoa. Now we got rid of this weird wannabe 3D imaging. Okay. So now we're going to keep going into this. And folks, like I said, make sure you have your magnifiers. Okay, so I brought this way down. Now, it doesn't look like much, but as I just zoom in, folks, pause it anywhere you like. I'm going to show you one area that really, really blew my mind down here, and then I'm going to show you something a little bit north of this. Okay, we're going to keep going. Keep bringing this down. Okay, we're going to sharpen it up a little bit. Folks, pause it right here. Check this out. Have yourself a good look, especially, and I'm going to try to put this in the, in the middle for you. There's a large structure I see smack dab in the middle of this photo. Okay, I'm going to keep going with this.
Now, in this area alone, folks, pause it right here. Tilt your head to the right. Now, have a good look at what's in this area. Absolutely crazy. Now, keep in mind, it's a three-mile section. It's a three-mile swath of what we're seeing here. When you look at that, I'm seeing crazy stuff here. I'm going to blur it a little bit. Now, have another look. Now, what I find interesting, and I'm going to show you this. I'm going to point this out a little bit. There's a structure right in the center of this. Okay, that looks like it's taller than the area just below it right here. Okay, check that out. What I find interesting is what's on top of the shape. Not so much the shape, but what's on top of it. Again, pause right here. This is fully enhanced so you guys can have a better look. This structure alone... Now, there's many structures in this area that's outlined. This one right here, okay, that alone is wild. Because what's there and on top of this shape is absolutely, to me, mind-blowing. And in my opinion, these are hundreds of structures just in this area alone. And there's another thing I just noticed, and I didn't notice this before, and I didn't even enhance this area. There appears to be what looks like a dome, something you would see like like a Doppler radar ball. Have you ever seen one of those for a weather channel? Like outside your, your one of your TV stations? This thing is cool right here, right in the center of that. And folks, just have a look at everything that's in here. Absolutely crazy, right? All right, let's jump up to the top. This is where it gets cool too. And this lighted circle, or a little bit lighter circle, Right here, smack dab in the middle of this right here. What is going on in there? We have little pieces. They look like little structures. Looks like they have domes on top right around here. Check that out, folks. Or this, for that matter. What is that? Okay. I seen this, and I was like, what, what could that possibly be? But it's what's in here all over this photo is what's crazy. Now, some areas mm, look like rocks and not really a whole lot going on, right? It's this stuff here you need to pay attention to. All of this blurring right there. That kind of area alone is scattered all over this photo, and you can see where they're trying to take things out. You have to try to look past that and inside it. Like this area alone, I don't know what this is or these items are, but when I looked at this one here, let me see if I can find it. It should be right around here. Okay, right here. You can see weird things. What looks like it has this band on the top, and like in the middle section of this thing. You have to really open your eyes to this. They are using this blur and this kind of grayness, if you will, to try and hide what's really in this photo. And that's what you got to look past. And this is what we have to deal with when trying to get through to see these anomalies. Now, I'm going to just look at this one more time close up. Folks, right there. That area alone. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a whole bunch of it in here. But this, to me, blew my mind. And if we back out a little bit, again, folks, just pause it. Just have a close look. It's everywhere. And I'm going to move up now to the top, and you can pause it again. You can also look at this small ball right here again. Right there. Just zoom into that. Looks like it's off the ground. There's a shadow right here to the right and just directly under it. A little bit lighter circle right here and smack dab in the middle of the screen right there. This here. To me, it's just mind-blowing. Not sure what any of this is. Okay. And multiple things up here. I'm going to bring the whole photo right here. Do it just like this. Folks, have a close look. Again, when you're looking at this photo, turn your head to the right as you're looking at each of these anomalies. Because this has been turned... So you can have a better view in relation to this square area up here 
And then again, look at the shadow just below it. Very, very interesting. And if you really look at the top, there's some things up there too. But again, if you're looking at that area right there with that arrow, if you can see it right there, okay? If you look right there in this whole area, check this out. Oh, wait a minute. It's nowhere to be found. Folks, this is what they do to every photo, whether it's the moon or anywhere, they do this purposely. But yeah, this stuff is there. I promise you it's there. And if you look at that arrow where it is on the bottom left, watch it really closely. That area is whitened over, that straight part in front of that, just above that arrow. It's completely white. Why do they do that? Why? Bring up the contrast or the exposure, and guess what? We can hide anything we want, details included. And there you go, folks. Folks, when I first seen this photo, I was like, wow, look at the way they literally exposed this area, touched it up where you can't see anything. So this way here, it takes away all of the details. To me, folks, personally, in my opinion, these are hundreds of structures scattered throughout that whole area. I see what looks like structures and different levels of structures. I see a bunch of structures scattered throughout. Now, are some of them in ruins? Like it, like maybe that uh, dwarf planet got rocked a few times. Maybe a couple of uh, asteroids or comets hit it. That would be enough to do any damage, correct? Okay. So to me, when I see that, I see a lot of things that are really intact. Some things looks like they had fallen over or look like they had moved or something like that. Of course, this is all speculation. But to me, in my personal opinion, as far as what we can really see pretty clearly, those are structures. But as always, folks, you get the last word. Drop your comments down below. Let me know what you think. I'm always curious to hear what you've got to say. Please like and share the video. It's always appreciated. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up so that YouTube shares it. Folks, got more coming up. Stay tuned. We'll see you then. Peace.